Uh, we're back with another one here today. We are working on a ream heat pump uh, split system. This is a place of business, uh, so I do have to respect their privacy, but I am going to bring you guys with me, uh, film what I can. We are at a monogram shop out here in the great state of uh, Florida, and uh, let's go check it out and see what we got. Let's do it. Okay, so I got my tools set up out here. Uh, looks like we've got a, a ream heat pump outside and uh, I'm assuming it's a ream inside. Like I said, it was replaced a few years ago. Looks a little bit more than a few years old, but we're gonna get this panel open and see what we got. So I've got the thermostat set to cool. I've already went inside, checked it out. It was already set to cool to 77. It is like 84, 85 degrees inside. Uh, so we gotta see why this condenser is not running. The inside unit is running. I, I heard the blower running. Uh, stuck my hand by the return. We have some airflow. So first thing I'm gonna look at here, let's see. Looks like we've got a status light on our board. It is calling for cooling but nothing is running over here at the contactor the contactor is pulled in it's going to verify we have 24 volts there and we do we've got 24 volts feeding that contactor coil the contactor is pulled in Let's see if we have power and we have no high voltage nothing go from one leg to ground nothing one leg to ground nothing okay so we simply have no no power outside so I'm gonna check this disconnect box uh, looks like they got them mixed up here I don't know why somebody swapped something up around here but the disconnect is here uh, looks like it's turned on so I could open up that disconnect box and I will if I have to but got my fill piece meter it's got the non-contact voltage and we're not getting anything nothing outside so i'm going to make my way inside see if i can find the breaker panel and uh see what we got Okay, so it's turned on. Okay, so the breaker was turned off. I turned it back on and still nothing happening here. Let's get set back up out here. Okay, so I've got 240, but nothing is still running. Nothing's running, so I know I have, I know I have high voltage uh, at the bottom of this contactor now because I just checked and I had 240. You can see it there, but we have to see if maybe the contactor is faulty and uh, not feeding the voltage across to the top, and it's not, so. Uh, what we have is you have 24 volts applied to the contactor coil which brings this contact point in 240 volts feeding from the power source from our disconnect coming in but it's not making it across the contactor so uh, you can visually inspect the contact points I'm gonna see if I'm getting contact or if I'm getting power across at least this bar here and I am this is a shunt, a shunt contactor, so it's gonna have voltage feeding through that side. And I'm actually getting voltage on both sides here. But the thing about it is, is that's feeding back from the common. So I'm reading 120 on both legs, but nothing across when I go across both of them. Okay, so this tells me that we have a faulty contactor. Uh, the contactor is not feeding the high voltage across the right side of this contactor 
and uh, therefore if we don't have 240 volts nothing's gonna run so I'm gonna go inside talk to the customer let them know what I found uh, this is gonna be a simple fix here get this contactor replaced get it fired up get her back in business she said if she would have went five more minutes in this place she would have died so let's get it fixed up guys okay so it, it looks like you have a bad contactor outside uh -huh. uh, it's a part it's a component that has high voltage coming in the bottom uh -huh. and it's supposed to feed the high voltage through to the top right. to the components for it to run uh -huh. and it's not feeding the high voltage so, so can you fix this? yeah so i have a contactor on my truck i can get it replaced yeah, for sure, you sure. and get you back in action okay yes, all right thank you you just bear with me Well, you know it's a good customer when they don't even ask you how much it's going to cost you know as far as to get it i mean it's hot in there so this lady's like forget about it can you fix it today I said yes yeah. she said go ahead and do it so i'm going to go get the contactor uh, get it replaced out i'm going to show you guys while, while i do that and uh, we'll fire this unit up together and get it back in action so let's get it done we got a big old coil for a package unit Got a leaking coil taking up my whole back of my van here, but oh, let's see. Got a contactor, contactor. Here it is. So, I mean, these, any of these will work, but uh, this one's got the shunt, as you can see there. It's got a bar that constantly feeds power to one side, so. I'm going to go back with the part that's in there and uh, get it fixed up. Okay, so always, always, always make sure you, your power is off. Shut the power off right there to disconnect. That's what it's for. It's a service disconnect. I'm going to verify the power is off. So we got no, no power, no voltage. We are safe to go. Um, and I'm going to show you this contactor here. When I remove the 24 volts, that contactor comes out and you can see how that works. I'm going to get this thing took out and uh, do what I do. You can see that shunt. That's what they call it, shunt, where it's constantly feeding power across it. And you can see the shunt on this one here. It's a little bit more visible. All I'm going to do is use my needle nose pliers, put it right back on where it came from. Okay, see if I can get in there with my, my tool there. Looks like we got one more wire here on the bottom. Feeds our feeds our defrost board for the for the uh, motor to, to have power. Get the new one screwed back in.
nice and snug. Okay, so we got the new contactor in. Um, the contactor coil is pulled in from the uh, 24 volts. We should have high voltage when I turn when I put the uh, disconnect back on there, and that should feed our components. And this thing should fire up. So let's fire this thing up and see what happens. Okay, there she goes. I'm gonna get my gauges hooked up, take some amp draws, go inside, take a temperature split, check the drain line out, all that good stuff. I hate hate to have a call back. Uh, so I'm gonna make sure everything's good to go, at least for the next 90 days, and maybe get her on a contract maintenance. These contact points can get worn out, uh, burnt or pitted. You know, in, in a residential home, if the unit is properly sized, you may not run into this issue too often. But in a place of business, a commercial building, where you have people coming in, going out, uh, leaving the building, opening the doors, uh, the unit, you know, it, it struggles a little bit to, to maintain that, that, that cooling capacity. So this contactor is pulled in and out, in and out all the time here in Florida, 10 months out of the year, even more than that, because the winter time, this is a heat pump. This thing is just taking a beating, taking a beating. So uh, these contact points will get pitted. Uh, they will get pitted out. And uh, what happens is, is it, it, even though it makes, it, it, it closes, it's not making full contact on the points back there. The contact points in there those points get pitted and burnt and what happens is it, it's just not made it's just not making good contact to send power to send voltage through we got the contact to replace guys unit fired back up it's running pretty good i'm gonna go back over there and check the pressures uh, check everything out make sure she's gonna be okay collect payment and hit the road jack so appreciate you guys watching uh if you haven't already hit that like button for me Hit that subscribe button so you don't miss out on any videos. Care, it was a pleasure meeting you, okay? okay thank you. Have a good day and enjoy.